All right, Venom. Hey, hi, how are you? How's it going? Part two, part two. Yeah, we tried once, but yeah. that was just a rehearsal. Now we're gonna do yeah, hopefully exactly. live. We have rehearsed it, we have rehearsed it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, so um, how was the last two years for you guys? Nuts. Nuts. Yeah, like for everybody, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was, um, we basically took the time to do the new album during the pandemic. There was absolutely no bugger all else we could do. Mm -hmm. So um, everything had to be done remotely. Jeremy's got his own studio in Tampa. I've got my own studio in Portugal. Tony's set up in London. Um, Tony normally comes over to my studio to do bass and vocals and any sort of extraneous lyric writing that we need to do, we do together, anything that isn't completed. Um, but every time we made the plans for him to get over, you know, the restrictions were lifted, then it went back, lockdown again, lifted, lockdown again. This is fucking crazy. So we just did everything remote. Tony sent me vocal takes and bass. Jeremy sent me all the drum takes, and uh, I put it all together in the studio in Portugal. So um, we've always, with this band, we've always sort of kind of worked that way, quite remote. But um, you know what you hear on the album is a band playing. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't sound like you know we've, we've transferred files across the fucking planet, but it was the only way we could do it. And the thing was, we could have released it earlier, but we thought, when are we going to get to tour this? Because, you know, we were looking at seeing bands were attempting to go out there and maybe he's getting one or two dates and then one member of the entire tour and crew would catch COVID and then the whole thing was it. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, oh, you know, so now, hopefully, the things are returning to normality. Um, We've got a good release date for the album, which is September 23rd. First single has already dropped, second single has dropped just yesterday. It's um, spinning on Radio Bloodstream, by the way, and don't forget to check them out on uh, Spotify, Spotify Deezer, Deezer, iTunes, it's all up there. It's all up there. And what's the website again, Tony? Uh, the website, uh, if you go to uh, www.venomain.co.uk, um, you can get all the information on tour dates and, and put all the singles up there and everything else. And it's through Nuclear Blast, Germany, of course. So uh, yeah. you can go there, it's on their pages, and you go uh, hit it up. And we, we're running some competitions for the new album, so you know, if you pre order and stuff, there's some really cool stuff to get some drum heads and all kinds of competitions and stuff. We're running, so get yourself there, Brilliant. have some fun. Have some fun. So, what's the um, uh, so we can pre order the, the album? Yeah, you can pre order uh, uh, digital's up now. The uh, the, the, the release uh, uh, is set around the VON. So, you know, we have a cassette release, vinyl release, you know, it's all old school, so, uh, but you can pre-order now, which puts you in competition mode, so you can enter there, and then the minute it drops, you get it, you get it straight away, so. Uh, so we are in Germany tonight. <coughs> yes. Today, actually, it's today. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but are you playing, you playing some kind of festival we around here? A, a festival, yeah, uh, Protzen, uh, I'm not sure how, f it's 100 kilometers from uh, Berlin. So we clear that because it's festival season right now. Yes. We, we announced yesterday with the single, the second single, "Don't Feed Me Your Lies." We um, a great video done by Andy Pilkington, a very metal Um We uh, uh, we announced the first tour, which is the US tour, which happens in the fall, October, starts in October. And up to then, we we got festivals. We play Alcatraz. We head on a day with Alcatraz with Accept. And uh, then we awesome. do Bloodstock, uh, those are kind of anniversary shows for the Black Metal album, 40th anniversary. Uh, so we're doing them, and uh, then we do the tour for uh, There's Only Black, that's the title of the new album, There's Only Black, uh, and uh, for September. So yeah, we've got European dates going to happen too, but uh, we're just playing it, you know, slow, slowly wins the race. Because again, like, like Jeff just said, you know, um, 2020 we were planning on putting the album out and then we'd go out and tour but of course with the pandemic it, the pause button was just held on and every time they lifted they put it back on again and it was like well you know if we can't tour until two years after the album goes out it's now an old album and people are going where's the new album so we thought well why waste it we want this to be the new album yeah. so we just have our time oh, so really? lots, lots of other projects that the guys do and I, I did as well filling in time you know in human condition yeah. they, they got their album out and, and the rap god brilliant fucking piece too, if you haven't heard it go and hit jail for the inhuman condition with Harry Butler uh, and obituary and next death and yeah I mean it's just some really really exciting stuff Jeff did a Patreon thing and he's building a he's building a tree for cats 
luxury house home for cats. Yeah. 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 Yourself. A cat hotel. No, yeah. one, one, of the, one of the passions I've got in, in, in Portugal, and I'm, I'm lucky that I've got a, a big back garden and uh, there's a barn at the bottom and it's, that's my studio. But um, I rescue cats, like street cats. You know? There's a lot of strays around. So at the moment, I've got I built. That was another thing I did during the pandemic. I built a catch like a shelter mm -hmm. in my garden, so they've got like like a little hotel with play areas. And so nice. so I've got 21 rescues. Wow. So I, I raise money for the other shelter, which is um, close to my main town as well. Okay. It's just a passion. It's something nice. that you know it just gives something back as well. Oh, nice. Very good. Very good. And Jeremy's running the competition about his drum heads and half the proceeds goes to the cash shop. Ooh, you should get on it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out Jeremy on his on his uh, Facebook, his Instagram. Go look for Mr. Clean Your War Machine, and you could you could uh, you could win that drum head. Yeah, yeah. The well, black metal drum head you use. <laughs> so. yeah. We'll send it to you in a box in the post. I think it's actually you got to remove the R, so it's just dumb head. Yeah. <laughs> you could win this dumb head. There it is. You get this one. <laughs> um, all right. Before I let you go, guys, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add uh, uh, after the before the just interview? that just that you know the uh, um, the whole idea with the album is only black is is the whole uh, premise of it was to display the the, the 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 nature of mankind within you know that we are our own demons we are our, we are at our best you know while we're developing you know, cures for cancer, you know, which could have caused the pandemic looking some kind of bat disease to find a cure for cancer finally so we can stop cancer, which I guess, you know, not being a conspiracy theorist, they probably have, but there's too much money in cancer to stop it. Um, however, you know, what amazes me and always has amazed me is why we're developing a cure for cancer, the worst disease to kill humans, uh, we can drop bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. We can threaten the world with nuclear weapons that's going to destroy the whole planet while we're you know saving cats on the street or looking after kids in orphanages or giving money to you know to save drought in africa it's like how, how does that work how does that work you know and you look beyond ourselves to blame something satanic for the bad stuff it's a devil in everybody and then for all the good stuff it has to be you know a God and, and the greater good like that, but it's like, but we, we are the creators of all of that. We do that. We decide what's good or not. You know, you can. We create the reality. We create the reality. Yeah. You could, you, you could leave this place now, and give a, a, a give a bum on the street. Um, you know, some some euros to get them some breakfast. Yep. You know, I could go in there and fill up a breakfast plate and go out and give it to someone. I could also step over someone who's lying in the street because I think they're pissed uh, and they may be desperate. They may need more help. They could be dying, but I'll step over them to get on a bus because, like, I've got to get somewhere. I don't have time for this charity right now. Uh, when I do have time for charity, I've got fucking nothing else going on there. But that's, that's us. That's who we are. So, you know, if we could kind of realize that and then come together and think you know it's a very small piece of dirt flying in this giant universe um we've only got this so you know uh you know the very fact that you know with brexit for the uk for me now coming to germany i have to justify why why am i coming when am i leaving you know two or three years ago i just walked in and walked out i was just a citizen of the world and now i'm not a citizen of the world i'm a citizen of a country and this is not my country so i have to justify why i'm in this country and it's like fucking hell there was a point where nobody owned the planet you know when it was panchea it was just there you know and all of a sudden now we've decided that each piece we own each piece so you have to justify things and it's like we, we have to get beyond that beyond the money beyond the capitalism just back to humanity and go you know we, we can create you know things to go into space and to, to, to look for other life and at the same time we can develop guns that's going to walk into a school and shoot a whole load of eight-year-olds just because someone was pissed off and nobody took care of that person you know who may have needed help but didn't but didn't have it to go to, you know? So it's like, why don't we fundamentally just look after each other? Um, there would be no starvation in the world if we all fed each other. You know rather, I mean? rather than develop multi-million dollar fucking weapons that will wipe out the world, <laughs> use that money to fucking help. Them. Irrigate the fucking planet. Yeah, you know, know what it is? Yeah. And fucking, you know, religion as well, it's like, sell your gold, sell everything, and solve the world. 
fucking poverty. You know, they talk about the, the, this planet that we're on, this blue planet, is two thirds water. Our bodies are what, more than 80% water? How is there drought? How is there drought? Two thirds of the planet is water, and they go, yeah, 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 there's drought in water. How is there drought? How can we not, like, get, get the salt out and give people a glass of water? I don't understand that. And they go, well, it's so expensive. It's like, what, what more expensive than charging someone like $100,000 to go up and down outside the atmosphere in a, in a fucking rocket for 10 minutes? It's like, wow, so you can spend all that money. You know, Jeff Bezos, nothing against Amazon, we used it all use it in a pandemic, it was fantastic. But he, his wife and his divorce settled for billions and billions and billions. He didn't mind because he's making that per week. It's like, what, you, you can't take one of them and help one country to go build yourself a water plant, build yourself, feed yourself. I mean, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. That. Yeah, for myself, you know, I don't understand borders at all. I never did. No, no. It's absolutely out of my mind. And what I loved about One Europe, <laughs> particularly for me growing up in the, you know, the 70s and the 80s, but having One Europe, it's like, it was like being in America or Canada. It's like I have to go from one side to the other. I'm in different states, but that's like seeing different countries. And when Europe came together, I thought, this is fucking brilliant. One currency, one thing, and then Britain went, no, we want to keep the pound. It's like, of course we do, because that makes no sense. But yeah, okay, well, we'll keep our queen on the front and we'll have different currency. But at least now I can just freely travel. And now we're back to, now I can't. Now yeah. it's 1972 again. Yeah, exactly. and I need to have a colony and I need to just know where I'm going. And it's like, oh it's my God. Exactly. Yeah. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. Right. But that's the, that's the whole epitome of the album. I think, you know, it's looking at ourselves, you know, and questioning it. You know, there's only black. Because we don't know. We don't know what's at the end of the universe. We don't know if there's life in the universe. We don't know what happens when we die. We, 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 we might experience it like, you know, Jeff had died, and that's where the title came from. He wrote a song about, we had a different title, and I was going a different route, uh, you know, around the same ideas, but then he sent this song, and yeah, I wrote this song, uh, There's Only Black, it's about me, my experience of death and what I saw, and that just was like, hit me like a brick. I was like, that's exactly it, that's the ultimate, what is, what is next? There's only black. So, makes you, in order to discover, you have to go in, you have to commit to it. That's it. And you could go into a black hole and it could be euphoric. Beauty, Would you call it never chocolate, uh, chocolate fountains and strawberries? <laughs> 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 I was like, that sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> There's none of that when I went. <laughs> <laughs> or it could be, uh, you know, horrible, but you said you don't yeah. know, so you go in, yeah. you can't come out and even tell anybody about it. You just like, you yeah. experience whatever it is you experience, but I mean, that's it. That's for you then. Period. End of the story. That's it. Yeah. Interesting concept. So there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But there could I be. Didn't say fuck all. There could be, but you, but you don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, my experience was I had a massive heart attack, and I was in another village, and um, called the ambulance. And I remember my girlfriend. She seen the whole thing. She came to the side of the ambulance, and she said, "How are you feeling?" And I, I turned my head. I was lying down. I turned my head like that, and I went. Actually, the pain's gone. So I was clinically dead for just over five minutes. And now I've got... There's only his chest hair. Chest hair. Yeah. And boobies. <laughs> chest hair and boobies. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, the only weird thing that happened was when I came back. I, I remember very quickly. I, just, I remember just looking down. And it was just what I can describe as a vortex. Right there, just this thing was spinning, and just span, 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 got faster and faster. And I was just watching this thing. I went freezing cold, and then it just went, just gone. And I was like that. And I was just looking. And I heard my own voice at one point screaming, "Don't give up, fight, fucking fight!" And because uh, I said to my girlfriend, I said, oh, no, no, no. "I was screaming. Everything I told my girlfriend didn't happen for her." Yeah. For her, for the reality, it didn't happen. And what was seconds to me was the full day. I didn't, I didn't know where, what was happening. So, and the doctor who attended, when they eventually got me stable, they kept me in hospital for two weeks on machines, basically kept me alive. I was going to Lisbon for the bypass. Um, the doctor who actually saved my life, he came outside because my girlfriend wasn't allowed in, and he said, uh, Tell your man he's the luckiest person on the planet today. He was gone. But I had no experience.
experience of white lights for us. But I've spoke to people since, a lot of people who have had those experiences out of body watching everything happening. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But for me, nothing. Just, and that's why I wrote the song, There's Only Black. There's Only Black. Yeah. All right. There Tony, you go. On Jer that happy note. <laughs> Jeremy, The Venom. Um, thank you very much. Nice to meet you guys. Really? Appreciate the time. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. much. Thank you. It was mm -hmm. so cool. Thank so you very cool. much. And uh, thank you. And don't forget, this is Venom on Bloodstream Radio. See, I did it. Yeah, you did it. You I did, did it, it very well. Without a memory foam pillar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. You'll have to watch part one. Yeah, part one. Yeah. <laughs> when he retrieves it. <laughs> well, probably never. <laughs> Don't be